I quickly padded over to the door. My shifted in her bed. What? What? Whoa. This is really strange. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Asagao Academy. In the last episode, we were having lunch with the normal boots and Mai, and Hana noticed that Mai was feeling a bit bummed out. Could it be because when Jared was asking Hana for pepper and Mai was so ready to help Jared out that Jared didn't even know her name? Didn't even know Mai's name, I mean? That's a little bit rude, and you can't help but feel a little bit bad for Mai, especially because we know that he, she has such a big crush on bro Jared, right? So, let's go ahead and see what happens after that. Or, well, spot, spot on introduction. <laughs> After class ended that day, Mai said she had volleyball practice and sped off. Thankfully, this time I knew where I was going, so I headed straight back and collapsed on my bed. It was nice to have some time to myself. After everything that happened, I felt like I was going crazy. I could use some relaxation. I didn't have a computer or a TV, and the book Satch gave me was really good but sometimes got a bit hard to read. Instead, I took out my phone and started flipping through the app store. Hmm. Nothing really looked good. Wait, what was that? I sat up. Dumba Doom's Revenge. Face off against three other players as you catch monsters, raise them, and use their unique skills to aid you on your puzzle-solving quest. Only you can save Meta World from its ignorant king and utter destruction. Now with a single player campaign, raise crops to feed your monsters. If you're lucky, they'll transform into cute girls. This sounds like... One of those games that takes full advantage of moe characters or or like any any kind of female anime character, you know what I mean? Like, come on, how many of you haven't browsed the app store and haven't seen a game like that? Heck, this isn't an, this isn't an app, but there's a whole Pokemon ROM hack that basically takes the Pokemon characters, like the sprites of the regular Pokemon, and replaces them with moe characters with moe girls like as okay I, i'm not gonna lie that that's the funniest thing that really is the funniest thing but yeah that's that's kind of what this whole scenario reminds me of what the hell it looks so stupid i don't know i don't know why i'm saying it so enthusiastically han is like this is so stupid this it's an outrage that something like this would be on the app store why would people even waste money getting this onto the app store in fact well, I mean, they didn't really mention whether or not it was a game being offered for free on the App Store, but... Yeah, there's, seriously, there's a lot of junk on the App Store. Like, whether it be on the Google Play Store or even even on the iTunes App Store, it's... You know how it is. It's like, it gets so excited when you have your first iPad or your iPhone or smartphone, and then when you actually look through all of the apps that they have to offer, it's like, the stuff... A majority of the stuff on here aren't even so great. But here, Hana is playing Dumb Doom's Revenge. We, we gotta start focusing on this game that Hana is playing. I skipped the intro sequence and quickly hit single player. Loading. The load times were terrible. And that's always wonderful. Suddenly, a cartoonish hilly valley met my eyes, panning over to a white castle nestled next to a cliff. A lazy king lay asleep on a throne when a squat silver soldier ran into the room. King Dumbadoom, quickly! We're under attack! Oh, just send the first battalion off, please. I'm rather tired. The night left, and the screen faded to a world map showing a horde of black blobs on the right side of the screen. A small group of knights ran up against the blobs and were instantly devoured. One of the black blobs spit out a helmet with a skull inside. What the hell is this game? Things continued in this way, with the king sending off his battalions haphazardly until no one was left. Then the king awoke in his chair, and turned to the screen. You! <laughs> me Only you can save wild- f Prevent wild- It's like I was trying to come in with the joke there, with the whole Smokey the Bear joke, but... That's clearly not happening. I don't think I can save your kingdom. You're the one menacing it. How dare you! What the hell? Could this thing hear me? You are no longer my advisor. Go back to your home village and let me deal with this myself. <laughs> this is getting a little bit creepy. How is it that- Oh man, is this one of those games that secretly makes use of the microphone of the phone? 
That's... that's not cool. A tiny sprite with brown hair flew across the world map, bouncing into a bunch of red houses. I guess my only choice is to raise an army of monsters myself, overthrow the king, and then raise an army to fight the oncoming blop... bloopity blobs? How the hell do you come to that conclusion? Finally, I was allowed to play the actual game. A dozen multicolored blocks appeared... Excuse me. A dozen of multicolored blocks appeared on the screen. The monsters I was initially given could only hit their corresponding colors. I couldn't activate any traps. Suddenly, more uh, supposedly, more monsters could eventually learn how to set traps, and you could do certain combos to hinder the opposing team. If you had an attractive girl on your team, she could use an ability to double the rate of your opponent's blocks, or have their clock time. But that had a drawback for you too, and could be used as an asset by the opponent. What I love about this scene is that it goes into the details of the game, how to play the game, how to win the game, the strategies behind the game. It doesn't go that deep, mind you, but just the fact that it's sharing what it is right now, it's, it's so cool. Not to mention that certain color combinations between girls and monsters activated unique secret abilities, and you could also evolve your monsters and feed them things. How the heck am I supposed to remember all this? I failed the first few times, but quickly got the hang of it. It was just about being adaptable and maintaining a flexible strategy after all. My eyes started to hurt and I looked at the time. 8 o'clock? It's been 4 hours? I, I had reading to do. I grabbed my textbook, flicked my radio on and began to read. There have been many tales of times when the moon had fallen or has fallen on other planets, the most popular of these being the myth of Termina. However, these myths have never proven to be more than a hallucination. Do you guys know what is being referenced here when they say Termina? Or when they say a moon? Oh, what? <laughs> when they say a moon. Yeah, yeah, Earth do Our Earth, our universe does not have a moon. But seriously, come on. Termina? Moon? But, um, yeah, what was I was gonna say something. Oh, yeah. Like, did you guys see how absorbed Hannah was with her app there? With her little game on her smartphone? I honestly don't remember the last time when I was so absorbed with a mobile game. As a matter of fact, I don't think that I've ever been that absorbed in a mobile game. Like, I was playing Tomo for a while, but like, like my friend said, Tomo is not actually a game. It's more of a social networking platform kind of deal where Nintendo tried to make a game out of it at the same time. It's kind of weird. And it got kind of boring pretty quick, so. And this classical music, by the way. This classical music. I wonder if this is a real classical song, because I'm, I'm pretty out of touch with classical songs. Like, I know a good number of them, but this does not sound familiar to me. My eyes blurred over my astronomy textbook, and I yawned. The Schubert... Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, the Schubert piece floating from my radio made me want to go to sleep and I toyed with the idea of going to class without finishing my reading. Yeah, that's the thing, like, classical music, uh, well, according to studies anyway, if these studies are to be trusted, classical music can actually help you with memorization and with studying, but at the same time, if you're gonna be doing that at night, it's also a big temptation, or it, it also serves as a means of tempting you to go to sleep because of how relaxing it can be. Who cared how many times the moon was supposed to fall? Especially when time travel was involved. <coughs> Hana! Mai burst in through the door, flung herself across the room, and grabbed my radio. Hey, where have you been? Uh -huh. What are you doing? Uh. Give me a second, we're missing it. <laughs> there we go. But I swear, that dog was the living worst. <laughs> That's why you need a bird like my, loving, my lovely Jacques. Watch your tongue. What is this? Shh. Hey. So, the time has come to make an official announcement. This year, just like every other year, the Normal Boots Club will be participating in the video game tournament. Yeah. Woohoo! Yay! As PBG applauded, uh, as PBG applauded as though he were a crowd of 30 people, I shot a puzzled glance at Mai. I hope you guys will support us again this year, and best of luck to our competitors. You guys are going down. And now for some music. And he goes, he goes to the Schubert piece. My turn down the radio inside. Was that it? Was, was that the song? When you, when you say that you were going to go back to the music, did you mean like a five second jingle? That's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you want? Um, um what was that? PB&J. It's PBG and John's radio show. They have a radio show? What do they do on it? Oh, uh, you know, they... 
talk and stuff and play music sometimes. Five second jingles, really. Everyone in school listens to it. I'm so glad you brought through your radio. I forgot mine at home. Wait, couldn't you just go online or whatever with your laptop? There's clearly a laptop on the desk there, Mai. You could use that for listening to the radio station, unless they don't really offer that online. You know, I could be getting ahead of myself here. And a video game tournament? Yeah, didn't you hear them talking about it the other day? No. Come to think of it, I hadn't paid much attention to their conversations. I was too busy worrying about myself. That's toxic. That, that's that, like legit. That's that's toxic behavior. Although I get it, I, I guess with her personality, and even with my personality, sometimes I guess I, I tend to be super self-conscious. And when you're self-conscious, sometimes it's even, it's hard to focus on the things around you or the things that people are saying when you're too darn busy thinking about your, your posture, you know, whether or not you're gonna say the right things. Honestly, it's, it's like a prison. It's terrible. I'm not lying. Every year they have a game tournament down at Higginbottom Mall. Lots of people come to compete, but everybody knows the real fight is between Normal Boots Club and the Hidden Block Club. Is that what they do? Video game tournaments? Yeah, that's why nobody, nobody's ever joined them since their inception. Well, I guess partly they're a group of friends who just happened to make a club together. But also, unless you're really talented, you just drag them down. Ouch. Not all of them are so harsh, but some of them... Well, my glanced away, but I felt like I knew who she was talking about. That's too bad. The conversation I had before with Jimmy and Caddy came to mind. Had they really thought I was joining the Normal Boots Club? There was no way. I hadn't played a video game since I was a kid. My father gave me a 4DS when I left home, but wait a second, I mean, you were playing a mobile game. I mean, it's not exactly a video video game, but it's a game, a digital game. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I'm personally someone who never really rode the hype train with mobile apps and mobile games, as I, I kind of made clear earlier. The night before I left home for Asagao, my dad came to visit me in my room. I had packed the few things I owned into a briefcase and a single cardboard box, set to be shipped with the train. I sat and stared at the box, somewhat bitter. I barely even needed it. I didn't own much. Hana? Oh, so this, this is what her dad looks like. Yeah, Dad? And by the way, aw at the cute, casual clothes Hana's wearing. Why doesn't she ever wear that on campus? Why is it that on the first day of- not even the first day of class, but the day before the first day of class when she first arrived at Asagao Academy, why was she wearing her uniform already? Why was she not wearing casual clothes? Even though he tried to hide it, I could see my- I could see by the deep wrinkles around his eyes and forehead that he was tired, sad. The past few years had taken their toll on him, and I hadn't eased things. You'll be leaving tomorrow. Yeah. A heavy silence hung between us, filling my childhood bedroom like styrofoam. Are you excited? Yeah! Yeah, I am! He nodded and glanced around my room, at the pale blue walls, the broken clock above my desk, the scuff marks around the door frame from where I ran into it, uh, from where I ran into it as a kid. I lived in this house almost my whole life, ever since moving after kindergarten. I was almost, it was almost everything I knew, but now it was too much for me. The decision to transfer to Asagao didn't come lightly. First, it was a prestigious institution with a highly prized reputation. Only the best of the best, touting either great grades, impressive talent, or lots of money, could get in. I was none of those things, but I made it in regardless. Part of me suspected I was a charity case. I received a small scholarship and it would no doubt look good for the academy to have fostered a poverty-stricken child in its walls. And despite the fact that my father couldn't afford it even with the scholarship, he guaranteed he'd support me if I went. I looked again at the wrinkles in my face, at his sagging shoulders. He pressed, it, he pressed his hands against his body to hide the way he shook. All for me. He'd be all alone. I'm glad you're going. I think this will be good for you. Yeah. I wish I could say something else, but nothing came. Well, honey. Just in case you get homesick, I brought a present for you. A present? From his pocket, my dad produced a shining pink Nintendo 4DS and placed it into my hands. For you. 
But... Why? How? Dad, this costs so much. You're already killing yourself to let me go. Why would you... Tears spilled from my eyes as my dad smiled. Nothing is too good for you, my dear Hana. His voice was trembling. You're my pride and joy. You deserve so much better than you've gotten from me. Dad... Go to Asagao. Have fun, make a lot of friends. And when you get homesick, you play with that. I'll make do. I stood up and hugged him, burying my face in his scratchy sweater and oatmeal smell. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, my little Hana. But the thing is, he forgot to give me a cartridge to play with. Oh, that's... That's a really touching, a really emotional scene there. At least we're getting some more of Hana's backstory. That's what I want to see. I want to see some more of what Hana's past post life was like you see that's what happens when i say hana so that i end up saying things like post yeah now i glance at the machine hidden behind my desk lamp my watched me carefully well, well you never know what could happen what what do you mean <laughs> my giggled nothing nothing at all but i just got back so i've got work to do <laughs> work right PBG and I still had that project due, and we hadn't met to discuss it at all. He said he had it under control, but I should probably make a backup plan. Just in case. That's definitely the smart thing to do, you know? As cool as PBG is, as nice as he is, he did admit that he thinks that school sucks, so why would we, why would we even think for a second that he would put more than 30 minutes of his time thinking or brainstorming this project? Of course, we're, we're talking about the... PBG character in this game, not the, not the real PBG. It wasn't that I didn't trust him, it was just that... Oh, okay, I didn't trust him. Sighing, I worked a kink out of my shoulder. It looked like it would be a long night. Have you guys... Have you guys ever had a school partner like that, a project partner like that, where you just ended up doing all of the work? I've heard stories, and it sounds it sounds unfair. It's It really is unfair how some people do that. How there are people who use other people to get a good grade. It sucks, really. And I've actually heard of stories where some people that I know actually made a good amount of money doing homework for other people. Now, yeah, sure, my friends did get to make money from that. So good, good on them, good on them. But still, it's kind of weird that that students to me anyway it's kind of strange that some students are like that where they're willing to pay money to get other people to do their homework but you know who am i to judge it's just that i feel like that's kind of counterintuitive with the whole purpose of homework and assignments you know who on earth would do this so early so early in the morning in fact that it wasn't even light out i quickly padded over to the door my shifted in her bed what what whoa this is really strange. It's about time. Who? Oh, honey. He... She... Pushed past me and swept into the room, flipping on the light switch. Paul and Nick followed after him. Uh... Hana, I feel just terrible for ruining your uniform. Sincerely. We owe you an apology and a clean uniform. I'm not so good at that kind of thing, so I brought a friend to help me. Josh pulled open my drawer and tossed out clothes left and right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, stop! That's my underwear, what's wrong with you? I ran to him and grabbed his arm, trying to pull him away. These panties are so cute, they're perfect for you. Get away from there! Where's your uniform? I ducked below Josh and pulled open a drawer, pulling out the sticky fabric. This would not fly in a high school or, or college, let alone a college. I threw it at Josh's face, but he caught it with ease. This is no problem, I promise I'll have this cleaned in no time. Girls? He snapped. Yeah, he clearly has snapped. <laughs> Paul, Nick, and Josh swept from my room, but they didn't head towards the hall exit. Instead, they turned left, heading deeper into the dormitory. I didn't have a good feeling about this. I'll admit, these guys have guts. To go to the girls' dormitory this early in the morning when clearly it was past curfew. I stepped into my slippers and ran into the hallway, just in time to see the door to the girls' bathroom close. <laughs> oh no. Ah, what are you doing in here? What's funny is that I never, I never gave Mimi that voice. I don't know why I'm giving her that voice right now, but I, I never gave her that voice before. 
I sprinted to the bathroom door, but before I could get there, Paul and Nick slammed into the wall across from the door. Men like you are the worst! Whoa! Whoa! No, th this was all a misunderstanding, please! I'm sure it was. No, Mimi, it really was. Wait a second, where's the other, uh, person who was with them? She's doing something with a uniform in the sink. Well, I mean, now that I gave her the high-pitched voice, I guess it would be appropriate for me to... Like, continue to voice act her with such a high voice, right? So... At the risk of sounding annoying, anyway. Mimi tossed her head with a sniff and headed back into the bathroom. She... Actually thinks Josh is a girl? <laughs> she wouldn't be the first. Josh himself believes he's a girl. That wig is magical. Well, stay out of the girl's bathroom. It's not exactly going to help your platform if word gets around that you're a pervert. Seriously. Although it, it, it is nice of them to do this, of course, but come on, dude. Come on, Paul, you've got a campaign to run. You're, you're going to get a lot of backlash from the students if you're going to, like, have rumors spread around that you are a pervert, that you are someone who likes to sneak into women's dormitories and go into their bathrooms. Although in all honesty, if it's, if it's this early in the morning, why, why was Mimi even in the bathroom in the first place? I sighed. Don't worry, I'll talk to Mimi. Go back to the boys dorm. All right. <laughs> I would- I, I, I read that weird again. Thank you so much, Hana. Yeah, yeah. I watched them scamper away, then headed into the bathroom. Hey, Joshalina! Hmm? You and I should probably get going. I rounded the corner and found him doing Mimi's hair. Uh, yeah, this is really weird, like, I know that I was asking why was Mimi in the bathroom this early in the morning in the first place, but then I reasoned in my head, you know, I'm sure that there are people out there that have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, so that makes sense, right? But here we find Josh Rolina doing Mimi's hair, so that, again, kind of makes me question, what the heck are you doing, doing, like, having someone do your hair this early in the morning? Come on. In a second, Hana, I've just got to finish this. Hana, have you met Josh Rolina? She's so good- Oh, yeah, that's right. I agree that I would do this higher-pitched voice. Hana, have you met Josh Rolina? She's so good with hair, and look, she even got the stain out of the shirt! I'm done. I'm not doing that again. Mimi held up my uniform. Really? Really? Thank goodness! Thank you so much! It's no problem, honey. I guess I'll let you finish. Mimi, you won't tell anyone about Paul and Nick coming to the bathroom, will you? Why wouldn't I? Well, as class representatives, they were just trying to help Joshua Lena get her, get her bearings. And they were showing her where the bathroom was. I shouldn't have been the one to show her. Or I should have been the one to show her, but I was asleep and they didn't want to wake me up. Oh, well, I guess it's fine then. Thank you. I stood staring at them, unsure of what to do next. Do you mind? I need to concentrate to finish this. Oh, I'm sorry. I went back to my room. Life at Asagao never got easier, did it? Is this like... Is this day three, day four of Asagao Academy? Or are we are we past the first week? I, I don't even remember anymore, but yeah. We were only at the beginning of the semester and dang, a lot of weird stuff has been happening. Although you, you got to admit that because of all this weird stuff, life is a lot more interesting for Hana here. Mai was still asleep when I got back. There was no way I was going back to bed, so I changed into my uniform, grabbed my bag, and went to class early. What I am wondering is how Mai was able to fall asleep through all of this. Because, as you guys would recall, these three dudes from Continue kind of just barged into the room. Josh was kind of dressed up as a woman and was going through their dresser, and Hana was screaming, Oh no, not my underwear! You know, that kind of stuff. I apologize, by the way, for doing that really high-pitched voice. I know that that must, that must be kind of annoying and not so pleasant on your eardrums. My plan was to get started on the project Miss Shizuka gave us. As sincere as PUG was, I wasn't quite sure he'd hold up his end of the bargain. Yeah, exactly what I was saying. I stepped into the classroom and went to my seat, throwing my bag against my desk. A small snap came from across the room. Shane was at his desk, giving me a look. Do you mind? I'm trying to work. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. 
I looked to the door. It was too late to leave, but I didn't want to be stuck by myself with a guy who clearly hated me. I sat down at my desk and looked at my hands. This is the quietest place I can find in the mornings. Really? Really? Not the library? Shane shook his head. I think that the library would still be closed at this time, right? I don't know. I see, I'll, I'll try not to bother you. He shook his head again. You're fine. Do whatever. Well, at least he's not completely sending us out, and at least it doesn't seem like he has a bitter hatred or resentment towards us. It'd be awkward if I just sat there like that. So, what are you working on? Shane looked at me, and for a moment I thought he wasn't going to answer. Then he waved me over. I crossed the room to his desk and looked over at his shoulder. Several sheets of paper with lightly sketched outlines lay in front of him. It looked like they were for... Comics? You draw comics? Yeah. For DC. Or would you guys prefer Marvel? Would, would you guys have preferred that I said Marvel? What about? He shrugged. Hmm. Whatever. He said it with a touch of finality, so I skipped to another topic. Do you mind if I ask where you're from? So, uh, Shane gave a heavy sigh. Could you not tell by my accent? Hmm. I'm from England. This is my second year. So you're telling me I was supposed to- I was supposed to be giving him an English accent this entire time? Well, like I said with Caddy, I'm- I'm not- I'm not gonna try lest I butcher it. He continued to draw, etching in the lines of a British flag above what looked to be a government building. Uh. Do you miss it? He finished shading a line before responding. I guess. My whole family is there. You're by yourself? Why did you come here? <sighs> Class will start soon. Don't you have something to work on? Ouch. Taking the hint, I went back to my desk. Suddenly, the door slammed open. Hey! Hey, look! We got here early! Wonderful. Oh, Hana! Shane looks like- Uh, Shane! Looks like it's just the four of us. We should stir up some trouble. Trouble? Let's plant an egg on Miss Shizuka's chair, eh? I bet she'd think it was hilarious. No. No. Aw, oh, come on. I bet I could find an exploding bird or two to dive bomb us during class. No. No. I bet you could probably... Bake her a cake. Really, Hana? <laughs> bake her a cake? Very, very goody two-shoes of you. <laughs> Filled with knives! Really? The heck is wrong with you? Shane was more than an ocean away from his family and friends. I was only two hours away from my dad, yet I missed him so much. Was Shane homesick at all? I'm, I'm sure that he is. Some other students filled the room and Mai joined me at the desk, asking why I abandoned her. I filled her in on the situation. She had a good laugh, but as the clock ticked closer to the class time, I felt like something was missing. Eventually, I realized what it was. PBG wasn't in class yet. Darn. The bell rang, Miss Shizuka came in and class began, but still he was nowhere to be found. Where was he? Uh-oh, where's your class partner? I mean, it's not like it's due today, so it's not like it matters really, but come on. The real problem that causes grinding to be necessary in RPGs, if you ask me, is that the whole system is flawed. <sighs> Miss Shizuka's on a tangent again. She must have gotten stood up. Class was nearly over and PBG still hadn't shown. I was worried, but no one else seemed to care. <laughs> that kid always misses class. Still, what if he was sick? Why didn't anyone care? At the sound of the bell, Mishizuka jumped. Oh, uh, well, turn in a two-page reflection on why the human species as a whole has the emotional range of a teaspoon. Do tomorrow. <laughs> she definitely got stood up. Um, um Mishizuka? I stood and dashed to her desk. Yes, Hana? PBG wasn't in class today, and I can take his notes to him if you need. <laughs> oh, Hana, you're a godsend. Miss Shizuka's eyes watered. She leaned over her desk and pulled me into a hug. Okay, I, I don't know how healthy it is to have such an emotionally unstable teacher in the classroom doing her job as a teacher, but, you know. <sighs> may, maybe we need to know a little bit more about Miss Shizuka's backstory. We've got Mai in the back always making these snarky remarks about how she got stood up or how she, like... Basically talking about her past love life. But that's not enough backstory for us, right? We need more of it. We need to know more about this Miss Shizuka character. Not really. It's wonderful to see our youth have hope. Hana. She pulled away and stared into my eyes. Don't ever 
give up on love. You're young. If PBG is the one you want, you have my blessing. Here, take these papers. Take these papers and go. She shoved the handouts from today's class in my hands and gathered her things. Bless your heart. She left the room crying. Dang. Poor, poor Miss Shizuka. If only we could just be a little bit more understanding towards the pain that she is feeling right now. We may not know her backstory, but that shouldn't keep us from being so understanding, you know? Oh, yes. We have to be so understanding of Miss... Poor Miss Shizuka, yes. Ha! Poor thing. She must have really liked this one. Does this happen often? <laughs> often enough, so you're taking that to PPG? Yeah. But now that I think of it, I don't know his room number. 402. How? It's next to Jared's room, so of course I notice him leaving in the mornings. Ah. Uh, I've got tryouts, so I won't be able to go with you. Good luck, though. I'm sure he'll be happy to see you. I told you, I don't think he feels that way. Before I could say anything more, she left the room. Hmm. 400, 401, 402. Here it is. All right. And wait a second. That, <laughs> that says 08. How is there, how are there rooms in the 400 range when this room says 08? Well, that's okay. But I, guys, this is a good stopping point for today's episode, as enjoyable as this has been. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. I really, in, I, I, I'm, eh. <laughs> I really appreciate that you guys took the time to watch this video. I will see you guys in the next episode of Asagao Academy. But until then, you guys take care. Mm -hmm.